Growing up, I always enjoyed the SpongeBob SquarePants video games. One of my all-time favorites was Lights, Camera, Pants. Remember that one? I'm sure you remember traveling back in time to get ice cream for your ancestor, or when you had to fight off all those people who were trying to break into the changing room while you were getting dressed. How about when you had to beat an old lady at checkers using witty remarks? Wait, what do you mean you don't remember any of that? Didn't we play the same game? In the early 2000s, many video games were made based on TV shows from the channel Nickelodeon. Many of the popular ones were Spongebob games, such as the movie or Battle for Bikini Bottom. Remember when Spongebob watched himself die? Wait, you don't remember that either? As it so happened, a lot of Spongebob video games were drastically different depending on which system you had them for. The company AWE had their own line of games for computers while Nickelodeon and their best friend THQ were making ones for consoles. The AWE games included Operation Krabby Patty and Employee of the Month as original titles, but they also had their own versions of Battle for Bikini Bottom in the movie. There was also the learning company's game, Spongebob Teaches Typing. That's what it was called, right? Operation Krabby Patty and Battle for Bikini Bottom played out as a series of mini-games with an overarching story. The other two, however, were point-and-click adventure games that sent you all throughout the ocean to find stuff. So when AWE received the task of adapting the newest game, Lights, Camera, Pants, which direction do you think they took it in? Well, both. The Lights, Camera, Pants PC game served as a big point-and-click adventure with several mini-games thrown in. Unlike everyone else at the time, this was the version I grew up with. I actually still have the poster that came with its old box. I love the little advertisements at the bottom here. It might have been a good thing that I didn't grow up with the console version, because I only ever had one controller and the game was multiplayer. For some reason, Nickelodeon became obsessed with multiplayer games in 2005. Remember Tack and the Great Juju Challenge? Man, I would do anything to live those days again. So if my childhood self loved this little computer game so much, do we think my older self can say the same? Why don't we get this film rolling and see if AWE's Lights, Camera, Pants can hold up all these years later? After we get some sweet, nostalgic opening titles, we're brought to an interesting menu screen where we see Spongebob and Patrick dressed as their favorite superheroes alongside our newest character, Gil Hammerstein. If you click this phone icon, you get a number you can text to play some cool games. I wonder if it still works. You can also click on Patrick to see all the minigames we'll play on our adventure. These are accessible at any time, even if you haven't reached them in the overall game yet. Now let's get on with the main event. SpongeBob shows up to an open casting call for the new adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, which is being held at the Shady Shoals rest home. SpongeBob is actually the only one who shows up, which really makes you wonder how poorly marketed this show was. You should have a properly completed application and release form. Oh, right. Now I just have to remember where I put it. Let's see. Did I put it in my pocket? Nope. I can't even tell you how many times I've quoted this line. AWE humor really is something else. Like with the humor, the graphics are also consistent with AWE's other titles, mostly resembling those of the movie. We can see that the background is drawn while the characters and key items are 3D. It blends together surprisingly well, if you ask me. When we're introduced to the producer, Gil Hammerstein, we get some pretty good director humor. I only do studio filming, you crawfish! Filming on location is for chum heads that can't act their way out of a fishbowl. That's great, kid. But audiences these days want big name actors, amazing special effects, and horrible scripts. Well, our script is horrible, but that's the only thing we got going for us. I work in television, kid. I never take risks. He says that because no one showed up to the audition, they can't move forward with the show, but SpongeBob offers to find actors and convinces Hammerstein to let him help out. This sets the premise for the overall game. You must travel through Bikini Bottom and gather a cast to fill the roles for the upcoming series. As we can see, we are in for something entirely different from the console version. Even Hammerstein's voice and personality are different. Ah, sure. It's so nice to... Okay, 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 yes sir. The plans are all in place. I I'm down at the Mermelayer set now, and I am confident we have found the... To be honest, I think I prefer his PC counterpart. Is that an unpopular opinion? I'm out of the loop with the Hammerstein fandom, please don't come after me. Ah! No! I'm upset! So once we're out in the world, we get to go meet Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. But first, we have to meet this old lady who's playing checker- Hey, wait a minute. This is the same creepy old lady from the movie. I guess she had to move here to stop oysters from stealing her pearls. 
Since she's playing checkers by herself, SpongeBob offers to join her and we're treated to the first minigame, a simple game of checkers. However, this is one heck of a note to start on. The AI is actually really smart and trying to win is a legitimate challenge. Just like those chess bots that always cheat, the lady is always ready for your next move. However, the developers figured the player would suck at checkers, so they included a failsafe. If you right-click on the SpongeBob icons when they appear, he'll make some jeer at the lady to tick her off. If you bother her enough time, she'll just quit the game out of spite, which counts as a win for you for some reason. Once you beat her, you can ask the lady to be in the show, and there you have your first actor. You also receive your first prop, the items that serve as collectibles that you can later use in your final movie. You can see which props and cast members you've recruited by pulling them up on a pause screen. You can also access Mermaid Man's belt, which shows you all the items you have. But wait till you see what happens when you set it to Wumbo. You can also use this map that shows you just how big this game is. There are different locations on the north, south, east, and west sides of Bikini Bottom, but you can only access them when you reach that part of the story. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go meet Mermaid Man Barnacle Boy. Here I should mention that the AWE games take place in their own complex and loosely related canon, so Spongebob never actually met the superheroes like he did in the show. This marks the first time he's ever spoken to them in this particular lore. So for those of you who follow the PC continuity, I guess this takes place before Employee of the Month. After eavesdropping on them, Spongebob finds out that they want to play checkers, but the old lady is hoarding the board. They also drop the remote through the couch and it fell through a secret entrance into the Mermalair. Sucks when that happens. When you convince the lady to get up, you get this animated cutscene of the superheroes leaping from the couch to the abandoned board. These are cool and all, but every computer I've ever played this on has lagged really badly during them. With the couch open, you're able to fall into the Mermalair in another silly cutscene. <coughs> Here, you can find the wall of gadgets and take Mermaid Man's famous tickle belt from it. Also the remote, but I have no idea how that fell from beneath the couch and landed specifically on this wall. Further in, you see the frozen Man Ray who has an eerily ominous introduction. This is obviously a replication of the TV show episode with the same plot, but remember, this universe has its own canon. SpongeBob unfreezes the nemesis of his heroes to ask him to be in the show, but as you can expect, it doesn't go according to plan. I'm through making those fools look good. <laughs> now, I am ready to escape this cave and begin my revenge. You then have to chase the villain through the Mermalair and... <laughs> uh, excuse me? I think he just vibrated. Eventually, Man Ray can't go any further because of Mermaid Man's invisible boatmobile blocking his path. This allows SpongeBob to put the tickle belt on him, forcing him into a fit of laughter. What's nice about this is that players who watch the show will know how to defeat Man Ray instantly, so it's a good tie-in to the franchise it's trying to represent. Afterwards, you can press a button on the wall that somehow launches the invisible boatmobile outside, meaning you have to stop it. Not sure how those devices are correlated, but it's time for our next minigame. You're holding on to the back of the boatmobile and skiing through sand, trying to pick up junk to slow it down until it stops. The junk is indicated by anchor icons that vary in size. The bigger the anchor, the more your junk meter goes up. If you hit an obstacle, you lose a bit of junk, but the obstacles are fairly easy to avoid if you just take your time and avoid skiing in the directions of the rocks. You can also jump, but it has potential to do more harm than good because you can't control your direction as well. The key is to take it slow and steady. However, there is something I don't understand. You have to click the right mouse button to pick up the junk. Why can't you just absorb it when you ski over it? That's a little confusing. When you stop the boat, SpongeBob is sent flying all the way to the Krusty Krab. Now is when the story becomes a little more of a choose your own adventure sort of deal. We see that the characters from the franchise are scattered throughout town and they all have things they want you to do for them. Patrick is one of the first ones you meet, and he's selling lemonade. Hey, this kind of foreshadowed that one strange episode that came out many years later. This one's a little more wholesome, though. 
Because of the format of one mission per character, characters like Patrick don't have as big of roles in the game as they normally do in Spongebob Media, but I actually don't mind this. It gives every character involved a chance to shine. Besides, we'll see them all again in the movie. There are also original characters, such as the Doctor tending to Mr. Krabs. It's also a known fact that Clancy Brown, Mr. Krabs' voice actor, never does the video games. He's just too big of an actor, and they likely don't pay as much as other jobs he can get. Because of this, he always has a different voice actor than the one in the show. Oh. Except this one, I suppose. What's cool about Mr. Krabs' mission is that it sends you to the Fry Cook Museum in order to pull a sacred spatula from a vat of ancient Greece. The museum is one of the most interactive locations in the entire game, which is great because it's one of the more unexplored places in the show. The mission is obviously based on the episode Neptune Spatula, but it has a bit of a twist. To qualify for pulling the golden spatula out of the grease, you have to answer a series of trivia questions to prove you're a worthy fry cook. It's a nice minigame, and it's fun to pick the wrong answers just to see the humorous dialogue. Cheese! Nice guess, but no. But you have to start all over from the very beginning every time, and you can't skip dialogue in this game. The questions are easy, and I can thank the episode Pickles for how I was able to remember the Krabby Patty making process for the last one. I'm not sure why you have to go through so much trouble to get a golden spatula. These things seem to be everywhere in Battle for Bikini Bottom. I like that a mission actually involves making a Krabby Patty, too. It's clear that the development team actually thought about including elements from the Spongebob world in their creation. You can tell these were people who knew the show and understood that a game based on it should include aspects from it. This is only one of the many parts of the game that ties into the show. When you pull up the expansive map, you can choose a location to head to from there. There are a good few places to explore, and plenty of actors to find in each of them. Let's go over to a few. You can go to Mrs. Puff's boating school, and Spongebob actually has a class that day. But Mrs. Puff doesn't really care if you just come and go. You go in to take a test and... Oh my Neptune. It's... It's... No way. It's actually Morty from the Spongebob movie game. I guess I might trade it for some fried ice cream. Hey, don't knock it till you've tried it. He went from being some random kid Spongebob doesn't know to being a classmate he's chummy with. He's upset because he forgot the combination to his locker, understandable, and he can't get his fried ice cream, I mean crackers, out of it. So you can find his combination outside to open the locker and get the crackers. You then give the crackers back to Morty, right? Right? Nope, you give them to a caterpillar in Sandy's tree dome so it can become a butterfly. I remember being so upset that I couldn't give the crackers to Morty. At least you can get him to be in the show. Speaking of Sandy, they made her extremely rude in this game. Watch your wisecracks about my furniture, SpongeBob, or you're gonna find yourself strung up by your britches, craving some chocolate covered nuts, and I want them now! That's an interesting direction to take the character in. Another place you can go is the convention center from the episode I'm Your Biggest Fanatic. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. If you haven't seen the episode, Kevin is the leader of a big jellyfishing club called the Jelly Spotters, and SpongeBob wants in. Kevin challenges him to catch the king jellyfish in order to prove his worthiness. This leads us to another minigame. In this one, you use a net to catch a certain amount of different colored jellyfish, then you bring them into a corral. You have to avoid the pink ones because they sting you and slow you down. Like with the skiing mission, it's weird that you have to right-click to release the jellyfish once you're in the corral. I'm not sure why they don't just get released automatically. Also, the corral is made of coral. Go figure. Once you catch all the jellyfish you need, King Jelly appears and goes into the corral himself. You then press a magic button to close him in. However, this mission has a bit of a bug. Sometimes, King Jellyfish will appear and just freeze where he is. This isn't just because of my copy or my computer, because I've encountered the same glitch as a kid. It's why I could never make it past this mission. Maybe I've just been really unlucky, but it's kind of strange that this could happen on two different copies. After you beat Kevin's mission and get his special ointment, you're free to visit Jellyfish Fields, which leads you to one of the best sequences in the game. You meet this biologist who explains that jellyfish are actually aliens from another planet, and they have a serious motivation for coming to Jellyfish Fields. My studies have found that they are searching for a mysterious portal that leads to another realm. According to my calculations, the portal should be right here, somewhere in the Jellyfish Fields. 
Wow, they really threw the SpongeBob continuity for a loop there. The AWE universe has some serious world building. As you explore, you come across this oyster, remember it for later. Then you see this jellyfish hive, but when you go to get jelly from it, a swarm shows up to chase you away. You take shelter in a cave, but... Pshaw! What could be dangerous about jumping headfirst into a gigantic, swirling purple vortex? With how easily we came across this, I'm surprised no one else has discovered it by now. The vortex takes you back to prehistoric times, so Spongebob fans can guess where this is going. The seahorse you meet right away bothers me because the game kinda tricks you into thinking it's significant, but it doesn't really do anything. When you explore the eerie landscape, you come across a primitive version of Spongebob's neighborhood, which surprisingly isn't in this game. You can visit your ancestor Spongegar, who has his own pet Gary. Must be a traditional thing. Of course I can understand you! Ice cream is the universal language! I'll be back as soon as I can find some. Is it fried ice cream though? This is one of the most unique stages in any Spongebob adaptation. I never would have expected anything to let you explore this location from the show. It's also shockingly expansive, but some of the places you can visit can be unsettling. You also meet this clam that you can give sand to so it can expand its bed, which is probably the most cryptic instance of figuring out which item to use in the game. It actually kind of stumped me when I last played it. You can get prehistoric versions of Patrick and Squidward to be in the movie by helping Squog to recover from jellyfish stings and by teaching Patar how to make fire. Imagine how horribly Spongebob changed history by doing this. He basically invented ice cream, fire, and sting ointment, just like how Squidward invented jellyfishing. Is that still canon, by the way? But here's something cool. The clam is apparently immortal and has grown much bigger in the future, so it remembers you and gives you a pearl for helping it out. You can also get it to be in the show. Now let's head over to Goo Lagoon, the beach. Here you can meet Larry the Lobster and a few others. Sadly, you can't steal his beach toys this time. However, when you go into a changing booth, you get one of the strangest minigames in SpongeBob history. Apparently, you take too long getting dressed, and the people outside grow antsy about it. They get so angry they start trying to tear their way into the tent. You then have to smack people as they try to rip through. It's a very weird rendition of Whack-A-Mole, but it's fun enough, and it's really easy. It ends when Don the Whale shows up and outright throws the tent all the way to Weenie Hut Juniors. Hey, Bubble Bass. You can try to get in the Tough Guys Club, the Salty Spittoon, or you can go to Weenie Hut Juniors, which looks a lot more appealing, don't you think? The two-headed guys from the movie are guarding the Salty Spittoon, which is pretty ironic considering their taste in music. Kinda neat how this game actually expanded on the lore of two of Spongebob's most obscure characters. In Weenie Hut Juniors, you meet an orange version of the really creepy guy from the PC movie. He's less creepy now because he's just a nerd who's obsessed with Mermaid Man the same way I'm obsessed with Bionicle. Is the show based on the challenge of the League of Super Acquaintances, or the later and definitely less cool Mermaid Man and his finny friends adventure? You can also home? get ice cream from the robot waiter from the show. Not fried, though. I'm not a weenie! Weenie. But 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 I'm not a weenie! Okay, okay. But during all this, you probably have one nagging question. Where the heck is Squidward? As it so happens, he moved to the neighborhood Tentacle Acres, where life is incredibly boring and everyone looks like him. You have to convince him to come back by calling off the guard so you can sneak in. Hello? Oh my goodness! You have to come quick! What's the matter? Some crazed maniac is playing music in public! Classical or jazz? Worse. Progressive rock! Okay, I never thought I'd hear Spongebob himself mention progressive rock. Does he listen to King Clamson or Pink Flounder? Strangely enough, Squidward is... shockingly wholesome in this game? To be honest, I'd prefer a nice mug of cocoa. No problem! There has to be a coffee shop around here somewhere. Those things are everywhere! Great! And don't forget the whipped cream! I always have whipped cream in my hot cocoa, and you can only get that at Bargain Mart. I got so bored that I actually missed being home! <gasps> you really missed me? Alright, enough of the savvy stuff. You have to help me! I guess someone on the writing team really liked him. He hardly even insults you or anything like he usually does. You know what? I like it. It's a nice change of formula.
While getting cocoa that Squidward asks you for, you head to the Bargain Mart, and it looks like the owner of the hotel from the movie has hit a low point in his life. How did all three of these trench dwellers move to Bikini Bottom and completely change every facet of their personality? I want to write a book about their adventures or something. So there's a sale on Cnut Butter and customers are invading. Apparently you work there now and you have to play this minigame where you throw Cnut Butter at customers as they fly at you. They also throw their money at you and you have to catch it. Some counters keep track of food you waste and money you miss, so you can't just mess around. It's oddly detailed when compared to how simplistic the other games are. It's okay. Also, it's worth it to see this satisfying clip of Squidward drinking the cocoa. To touch on some of the other locations, you can go to the Chum Bucket to recruit Plankton, Karen, and even Robo Spongebob. Spongebob actually impersonates Plankton to talk to Karen. Karen! I order you to give me the combination to that storage closet. Oddly impressive. Also, when you visit the movie theater, you get this minigame where the Dirty Bubble, one of Mermaid Man's enemies, attacks the set of the show. Spongebob hears about this somehow and comes running to help out. This is essentially the last time we see Gil Hammerstein, at least fully animated. The Dirty Bubble uses a big bubble wand mechanism to clone himself and you have to murder all his clones by jumping up to pop them. Not too much to say, just a nice little activity because they couldn't figure out any other way for you to get the dirty bubble in the show. Now let's go to one last location, then we'll check out the masterpiece of a movie we've made. When you go to the Kelp Forest, which is in nearly everything AWE made, you get the most intricate adventure in the entire game. You deliberately dive into it with no in-universe reason given, then you come across... Look, Mermaid Man's magic conch! Um... Since when does the magic conch belong to Mermaid Man? I know AWE exists in its own universe, but this might be an outright mistake. I think they confused the magic conch shell with the conch Spongebob had to blow into to summon Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy in one of the episodes. It doesn't even matter in the story because it tells you to follow the seahorse that's right there in front of you. You follow it through a really long forest sequence, then you reach a campsite and you can recruit it for your movie. Seems the horse is also immortal, seeing as how it's the same one from the BC stage. You meet these campers who say the Flying Dutchman has hidden a treasure somewhere nearby, and it supposedly contains a priceless artifact. Hate to break it to you guys, but I'm fairly certain it's just a treasure chest filled with bus tokens. In actuality, it ends up being a sock. But if you've seen the show, you likely know its significance. Further exploring the forest will lead you to this rope that I used to think was a big light shining through the forest in the distance. They probably could have made it a little more rope-like, but most people would click on it anyway. This actually takes you to the Flying Dutchman ship, which is a really cool and frightening location to visit. You meet this ghost who can be kind of scary for younger players. Wow! How do you make your voice echo, echo, echo like that? You breathe fire? Uh, no. If you learned how to breathe fire, you'd be standing here. SpongeBob shows no mercy in these games. The last minigame starts when a bunch of ghosts invade the ship, but the way they show you it through the dialogue is kind of silly. What was that? Oh no! Hey, where are you going? Ah! It's a mutiny! I'll head over to the ectoplasmic containment flinger. Where do we even begin? First of all, the ghost flying up like that is so freaking funny to me for some reason. Secondly, why does SpongeBob have two overlapping screams? Thirdly, why does SpongeBob care to take part in this? Fourthly, what is that last thing he mentioned and how does he know about it and how to use it? None of this is explained at all, so let's just talk about the minigame. You have to shoot the attacking ghost pirates with your Ghostbusters vacuum and hold the air on them until they turn blue. Then you suck them in. You have to avoid the green fireballs, <clears throat> I'm sorry, slime balls, and capture as many blue ghosts as you can. It's good, even though the scene before it made no sense whatsoever. They went full on Operation Krabby Patty with the writing on that one. Once you're finished, you have to bring the sock to the Flying Dutchman himself, but the only way to him is through the perfume department. Unfortunately, the perfume department scene is far too intense to show on YouTube, and I'm so shaken by it that I can't even find myself to watch it again while editing this video, so we're just gonna skip over it and get to the Flying Dutchman himself. He's so thankful that you gave him his dining sock that he gives you three wishes. Oh, 
I really wish you wouldn't rush me. Fine, take all the time you need. Two wishes left. No, no. I wish I'd learned to keep my big mouth shut. I thought you'd never ask. Okay, but that's actually a really good trait to have. Not a bad wish there, Sponge Guy. And yeah, your last wish is for the Dutchman to be in the show. Once you have at least one person for every role, you get this image of Gil handing you a pamphlet, and then you can click on the icon in the upper right corner of your screen to actually make your movie. Each TV show character has a select few characters that can play them, so you get to decide which ones to cast. This is a really fun process, and you can make so many different combinations with it. You can also choose which props you want to use for each scene. Let's just make a silly little cast here, and then we'll watch the movie together. Grab your popcorn, and let's take a look at the fruit of our labor. I wonder what this button does. What have you done this time, you old coot? Mermaid Man! That's it. This time I'm calling the police. Why was there a shower head just hanging in the doorway? It's Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. They've destroyed Shady Shoals, and they're trying to escape. All units proceed with necessary speed. Oh, I got him. Over. I want to be shocked by the wanted poster just magically floating in midair back there, but I'm too blinded by the graceful presence of Morty in our midst. One line is all he needs. Clearly Oscar worthy. He's trying his best. Well, basically, he steals buildings. Why is there just a chair there? Also, the immortal clam has such a way with words. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. What have you heard? I've heard that he's, uh, really sneaky. Well, that's groundbreaking information. I have one more question, Grubs. How's my order of meatloaf? That scene along? was entirely unnecessary. You have to save the damsel! Do I have to spell everything out for you? Dirty Bubble, come and let us retire to my lair, where we shall imbibe the rich nectar of the steamed Terrazzo Monticello and feast on a delectable selection of profiteroles. Did Man Ray come down with the Englishman disease or something? Oh, so, lean green marine the biologist. What can you tell us about the sneaky hermit's possible weakness? Of what? Speak English or I will crush your brain into a lumpy mass with which I could spread across my morning toast. I love toast. It's funny because Man Ray says that no matter who's playing the biologist. Well, do you truly believe your little pathetic alliance is enough to stop me? Our combined might will spell your ultimate doom, sneaky one. Enough! Now my true power shall be unleashed in all its sneaky glory! This fight scene is weird because Squawk is supposed to be the stunt double, but he's just kind of there in the corner of the screen. What's he doing? Well, I guess everything is back to normal again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna pull your pants up, Mermaid Man? All in good time, Barnacle Boy. All in good time. Why are his pants down in the first place? And that concludes both our movie and the entire game of Lights, Camera, Pants. So what do we think? Does it hold up? You can't deny that there's an impressive amount of variety here. It uses as many Spongebob characters and locations as it can get away with while also incorporating funny ones and characters from other AWE titles. I loved this game as a child, and I still do today. Sure, the minigames are simplistic, and sometimes the writing can be a little strange, but it's one heck of a gem for big fans of Spongebob. You really get to explore the universe and see all there is to see, even going through locations that are often disregarded. You can have so much fun going through all the different casting options you can choose from, and the overall game is always nice to replay. If you want a game with the same initial storyline as the console version of Lights, Camera, Pants, but with more adventure and options for your movie, this may be the one for you. Now, AWE as a company didn't last very long, releasing their final game in 2010. However, they would only spend one more year with Spongebob before saying their last farewell to our childhood hero. If this was the last game to come out in the AWE Spongebob series, it would make for the perfect conclusion an accumulation of everything they had worked up to. 
adventure, mini games, universe interaction, references to the show, humor, you name it. This game ticked all the boxes. If this was the end, AWE would go out with a bang. However, this was not the last SpongeBob game they released. There is one final SpongeBob PC game that came out in 2008, which would serve as the ultimate conclusion to AWE's run. How was it? Well, we'll just have to wait and see for ourselves. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next memory.